This week, let's talk about institutions, story, social media, and gymnastics. Almost a triple. And to be more specific, Mega gymnastics of COVID-19 anti-vaxxers. The war against COVID-19 virus is also the battle against fake news. And to be more specific, yung mga conspiracy theories about the pandemic, about the vaccines. If you're watching this, then there's a bigger chance that we're on the same page. We trust science. Napakababa naman kasi yung chance na ikaw ay isang anti-vaxxer and your YouTube algorithm directed you to my video. But if you're someone I know na ayaw sa vaccine or half-hearted pa, please watch the entire video. And of course, my target audience, for those who are like me, who also have been struggling in engaging the anti-vaxxer friends and relatives in a conversation, then this is perfect for you. How do we talk with anti-vaxxers? Should we even try to convince them kahit mukhang pointless na? The insistence to believe that a pandemic is fake and that COVID-19 vaccines are dangerous and unnecessary requires a lot of mental gymnastics because the facts are in front of them but they've been avoiding it. And as the term suggests, anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists go through different lengths just to twist and turn the truth. They bend, they tumble, they split whenever they are confronted with information that does not align with what they currently believe in. And who can blame them? Some of the common plots in movies are about government cover-ups. And the answer you're looking for lies right here. Who are you? Really? I'm just a figment of your imagination. Big Pharma abuse. I know what you do here. Your hustle. Look at all these cash cows on your wall just leaking money into your account and put them together we have side effects deaths and the undead <laughs> but they are movies with made up characters pero gets ko naman some plot elements are rooted from actual observations things that have happened but what most anti-vaxxers overlook is that they also have to examine the information on how their current worldview stands against facts research and evidence and we have to show it to them side by side the psychology of this behavior is best explained by a cognitive bias called the dunning kruger effect in which people overestimate their knowledge about a subject and underestimate how much they don't know but if the story they subscribe to is well written and it is packaged and shown in different ways then i'm sure we can somehow understand why they easily fall for it from what i personally encountered this is the grand narrative that all anti-vaxxers cling on to whether they are evangelicals, mga hipsters, or anti-government people, I'm not going to give it airtime. You can pause the video and read. This is it. And any information that is contradicting their worldview is immediately tagged as a lie, a hoax, and for them, tayo yung fake news. That the government is covering things up, that there are under-the-table transactions in big pharma companies, and that the media is lying. Here's the thing about institutions, yung mga minensyo nila, they come in many forms. These are socially constructed. Ginawa natin mga tao siya to serve a certain purpose to facilitate a set of behaviors. There are formal institutions which basically have written rules like government and its constitution, Facebook and its terms and conditions, the institution of marriage and the contract or prenup agreements. On the other hand, informal institutions usually come with unwritten rules like culture, gender norms, and social media ethics, and many more. At ito mga formal institutions na sinabi ko, these are very important because they maintain order in society at para maging solid entities na pagkakatiwalaan talaga sila, there must be ways to make sure na hindi sila babalik ko o magkakamali basta-basta. No institution is perfect, but those with checks and balances as an integral part of how they operate mas mapagkakatiwalaan to kesa dun sa mga wala. So when anti-vaxxers say that these institutions are lying about COVID-19, na control yung information na nilalabas about the vaccines, paano ka mag reply Here are two tips. Explain to them that it is very difficult for these institutions to lie and even to continuously lie kasi pag ginawa nila yun, madaling ma-expose yung mga questionable actions nila. Sa government, for example, merong commission on audit to check their expenses kung mga pinagbibili nila. Merong freedom of information that makes the contracts and transactions by government accessible to the public. And ultimately, lahat ng mga political personalities, merong oppositions na it is in their interest na hanapan sila ng mali. Same case for media. Meron silang editorial board na sa bawat stories na gustong i-release ng mga reporters on the ground, kailangan i-fact check ng mga different set of eyes bago i-publish or i-televise. It is in the interest of any media company to be the first one to release the news with complete and accurate information kasi marami silang competitors. 
And if meron silang maling information na isinipubliko, pwede silang kasuhan ng slander or libel. So when anti-vaxxers are accusing that the government or the media is blatantly lying about COVID-19, na hindi naman totoo yung mga death toll, na harmful talaga yung vaccine, di lang nila sinasabi, emphasize to these anti-vaxxers that it is extremely difficult for the media to do so. And it is even risky for them to even attempt that. Kahit nga ang media, they keep a close eye to what the government is doing. Meron tayong tinatawag na investigative journalism. And in a scenario na may inexpose silang kamalian ng government, responsible journalism demands na dapat may ilalabas silang document or proof for whatever claim that they have. Let's not forget, what about the institution of science? How do we give credence to whatever claim they have? Di naman tayo mga best in science at di naman ganun kadali maintindihan yung mga scientific jargon. That is the reason kaya meron tayong experts' opinion. The scientific community has written rules about it. This is called the research process. Whenever they release statements and findings, meron dapat data na nakolek at hindi gawa-gawa yung basis. And their research studies must be published online and be accessible to the public. And the most critical part in the institution of science, their work must be peer-reviewed. And there must be third parties or other experts who can check and verify their work. There is such a thing as burden of proof. And the party who takes this burden is the one who is questioning an existing and established fact. So, what is presumed to be correct in the discourse in COVID-19 is that the vaccines are safe. Marami ng research and experts saying that. If you disagree with that, that vaccines are killing people, you then have the burden of proof. Provide counter-research and data giving that very conclusion. And you have to make sure that it follows the research process. Kasi what's stopping someone from making this all up? Trust me, napakadaling gumawa ng kwento. This is why the government, the media, and the scientific community follows institutional processes because they need to take care of one crucial thing, and that is their reputation. As much as possible, they don't want to ruin their track record, their integrity, their public image kasi maapektuhan ng work nila at walang magkitiwala sa kanila in the future if they blatantly lie for something glaring as death toll and effectiveness of vaccines. This is step number one. Explain to the anti-vaxxers the institutional process and that these institutions try their best to abide by them. Papansin nyo, anti-vaxxers thrive in the absence of information. So, they construct or find stories that can explain and justify their views. And an essential information that is missing is hindi sila aware kung paano ba nangyayari yung mga proseso. And after that, convinced na ba sila? Most likely, no. They will still be skeptic because they have their own basis. This is where step number two is critical. Ask if their bases or sources have the same institutional process. Do the scientists who say that the vaccines are dangerous, do they publish their research? Or puro salita lang? And if they do publish it, is it peer-reviewed by other experts? Come on, hindi lahat na pumasa sa bar or board exam or mga gumraduate sa med school, hindi lahat maayos magtrabaho. Who would you believe? The claim of one scientist or what nine other experts or the majority of the scientific community are saying? What about the blog posts or videos with anti-vaccine content? Do they also have an editorial board bago nila i-publish yun? Do they cite their sources? Kilala mo ba kung sino gumawa? Will they put their name on the line with hard-hitting and specific claims? Because this is a strong claim. Kasi if you publicly say or publish statement despite the risk na makasuhan ka ng slander or libel, then that is a very courageous statement and that deserves an investigation. Pero pag ito, mukhang half-baked opinion lang, pampagulo ka lang. Ang basis mo ba ay isang social media post or kwento or anecdote lang ng isang tao? Walang pictures, walang videos, walang documents to substantiate the story? Pag wala, what sets it apart from chismis? Will this always work? Sadly, no. I've learned this the hard way because it still hasn't worked for many relatives of mine. Nagsisend pa rin sila ng fake news sa family clan group chats namin. But I still do it and I still urge you to still do it. Not mainly for the people who are anti-vaxxers kasi it's difficult to engage in their misguided religious beliefs. I do it for the rest of the family, for the rest of my friends. The younger ones, yung mga undecided pa sa vaccine, yung mga tao na kabasa ng bangayan or debate namin. Because if they can see that no one is engaging or confronting these anti-vaxxers, they would assume na lahat ng mga sinesend nila, lahat ng mga sinasabi nila, yun yung totoo. Anti-vaxxers thrive in spaces na walang kumekustyon sa kanila. And that's why they have their own bubble na sila-sila lang mismo nag a sa mga pinagsasabi nila at walang ibang experts who can say otherwise. They don't welcome other people's opinion. And that's why these two steps are critical on how you engage with them. One study recommends that we shouldn't say that they are delusional or stupid because that would result in them shutting people off. And that's why I suggest these two things. Fill in the gaps to their claims. The reason why they can easily jump to conclusions is because there is a big blank part in their thought process. 
ibigay natin yun. Second, don't just tell them na flawed yung way of thinking nila because there's a lack of evidence. Make them realize that. You have to ask them. Give them thought-provoking questions so that the answers will be coming from themselves. You do this to demonstrate to other people how ridiculous the claims of anti-vaxxers are when they are confronted with the counter-narrative. Na ikaw, calm and collected ka with basis yung mga sinasabi mo and that you are asking the right questions but the anti-vaxxers cannot engage properly. That is how you convince other people. That's how you convince other people in social media that the truth, the facts will always stand even if strong negative forces are telling otherwise. This is a lot to unpack and there are a lot of other elements that I still want to discuss. Critical lang nam establish natin yung importance of institutions. Well, what about you? How have you been engaging with anti-vaxxers? And if you have friends and relatives na ayaw maniwala sa vaccines, na naniniwala sa hashtag Plandemic, then do send this link to them. Who knows? They might watch it. Ask them to just simply watch the video. This is Andrew Beso. Vaccines are safe and thank you for watching. Bye!